Welcome. This is 117 Details, Glitches, and Easter Eggs in Halo 3. Number 1. The Master Chief arrives for the first time in Halo 3 at precisely 1 minute and 17 seconds into the opening cutscene, when the camera descends to reveal his outstretched arm. This is both a reference to Master Chief's number, 117, and to 7 because it's 77 seconds in. At the end of the arrival cutscene, there are seven different lines Sergeant Johnson will say, including multiple different lines on Legendary. We must go. The brutes have our scent. Then they must love the smell of green. Then they must love the smell of hero. Then they must love the smell of badass. Then they must love the scent of a real man. Then they must love the scent of testosterone. Then they must love the smell of badass. And I left a little present for you, Arbiter, and I'm walking away. Ha ha ha! They must love the smell of Bulgari. Yeah, I'm doing a little product placement. I gotta get paid too! On the butt of the assault rifle, a small marathon symbol can be found. It's also displayed on the left side of the weapon just below the charging handle. If examined closely, you can see several stamping details on the sides and top of the M6G pistol. The most noteworthy examples are Korean writing stamped on the top of the barrel and on the bottom of the magazine. The writing translates to the number 7. The writing is also stamped upside down. Also, on the side of the pistol above the handle, the stamp incorrectly labels it as a Model 6C instead of the correct 6G. On the base of most bullet shell casings that are ejected, there is writing that says Chief on the top and EG-X on the bottom. Johnson and his squad climb up this cliff by the waterfall. If the player tries to follow Johnson or just simply stare at him after he climbs up, he'll say this. Keep an eye out for the Bravo team, Chief. If the Brutes do have our scent, those boys are in a lot of trouble. When using the Brute Shot, no matter how many grenades are fired from a belt, when the player reloads, the animation always shows you reloading a full belt of six grenades. If examined closely, multiple Covenant symbols can be seen engraved on the hilt of the Energy Sword. There are three tree carvings scattered throughout this level. The first can be found on the tree directly in the center of the area where you encounter the sleeping grunts. The carving features a heart and the initials M plus L. The second carving can be found at the spot where the Brute interrogates Sergeant Reynolds. It's directly to the left if facing the Brute. This carving is also a heart with the initials M plus L, but also has a date with it, 7-16-95. And the third and final carving is located in the sniper alley section right before you move on to the area with Johnson's crashed pelican. This time it says Sam plus Grady, love dad. If you fire a battle rifle burst and do another quick action, like performing a melee attack, there's a chance only one or two bullets will be fired. For example, if you fire bursts until 24 bullets are left, and then you fire a burst while meleeing, you may end up with 22 or 23 bullets. Multiple cavemen can be found throughout this level. The first caveman can be seen across the river, above and to the right where the jackal snipers spawn on Heroic and Legendary. He can be seen all by himself, sitting in a tree branch. And unlike the other caveman, there is no way to reach him. The next encounter is at the end of the sniper alley section, where a caveman family can be found huddled together. You can shoot, but not kill them, although blood will spray out of their bodies. The largest caveman also appears to be holding a teddy bear, and the last caveman can be seen outside the level overlooking the dam. If the player is fast enough, they can actually kill the brute chieftain hanging on the side of the phantom. And if you're super lucky, his gravity hammer and invincibility will fall on this ledge which you can pick up and use. Even if you're successful in killing him, he'll still spawn on the dam. Johnson's down pelican plays a transmission received from Crow's Nest. Echo 5-1, this is Crow's Nest. Echo 5-1, please respond. Hocus, 5-1 is down. Divert for emergency evac. Over. During the quid pro quo cutscene in which the Arbiter points out Johnson being forced into the holding area, the weapon that Chief is holding will vary depending on what primary weapon the player is holding prior to the cutscene, just like during the cutscenes in Halo 2. 
This is only one of two occurrences in which the player can choose what weapon Chief has in a cutscene in the entire game. Every cutscene after this one, with the exception of the Shadow of Intense Entrance, has Master Chief scripted to hold specific weapons. Any equipment activated prior to the cutscene will also be shown. At the very beginning of the level Crow's Nest, if you stand on the Arbiter's right and look at his head, his right eye will disappear and reappear numerous times. The seventh column icon, a commonly known bungee symbol, can be seen on several of these UNSC screens. If playing co-op on this level, the Arbiter has a melee animation even when he's unarmed. His melee will look like a normal elite, but the attack will do no damage. You can dribble, if you will, the skull at the beginning of Crow's Nest. Just simply pick up the skull when unarmed and rapidly press the right trigger. The forklifts and semi-trucks found abandoned throughout this level will still have their motors running. With their operators having either evacuated or were killed by the Covenant. The deployable cover has another ability besides the obvious shield. It has a feature where you can shoot through it one way with all bullet-based weapons besides shotguns, along with the Brute Spiker. When Miranda suggests to Johnson to put out his cigar, he actually tosses it to the ground and stamps it out. When Miranda tells Chief about their farewell gift to the Brutes, if you go upstairs next to the computer, it will have the words Mac and Whack. Whack is a reference to Microsoft's infamous blue screen of death. If the Arbiter or any Elite crouches and then presses the B button while wielding a gravity hammer, he will either do an animation where he swings the hammer horizontally, or he'll slam the hammer down vertically like a Brute Chieftain does. While you can use these ladders to climb up onto this raised platform, you can also climb up into these vents, letting you bypass enemy fire and making it easier to flank around enemies and catch them by surprise. The shotgun's 8-gauge shell has the word Hippo carved on the bottom. A total of 7 marines can be rescued from the barracks. If you look carefully, Miranda is actually in the Pelican's driver's seat when she comes to pick you up, and her mouth will even sync up with what she's saying over the comm channel. This marine actually goes to the generator room and turns on the emergency powered when ordered to. When approached, the player can actually make the switch go up and down when moving in front of it. These marines are missing their data pads that they're supposed to be punching info into. The two cave doors in the beginning of the level are both numbered 7. The Warthog has a full working dashboard with digital readouts and a speed dial that actually moves when you pick up speed. The Warthog's tires are printed with the word Puma. This is a reference to an episode of Red vs. Blue in which Simmons and Griff argue with Sarge about whether to call the vehicle a Puma or Warthog. Plasma can be seen leaking from this downed phantom. It looks a lot like the fire effect that you would see coming from a human vehicle, except purple. There's some extra dialogue if the player approaches this area and sees the wreckage of New Mombasa's space elevator. New Mombasa's space elevator? It collapsed when the city got glassed. But the tether was thousands of kilometers high. Yeah, well now it's scattered all over the savannah. You can actually see smoke emerging from Crow's Nest located high up into the mountainside. The rectangle hole on the rock is presumably the hangar that you defended and escaped from. These crashed phantoms play radio transmissions from an unknown brute commander. The second phantom also transmits some bonus goodies if you hang around after the initial transmission. After you hear the brute, the phantom will start broadcasting Morse code. And if you continue to stick around for a really long time, the Phantom will then start to play a clip of the song Under the Cover of Night, heard during the mission The Truth and Reconciliation and Combat Evolved.
this brute sniper in the floating tower at the end of the highway won't attack you even if you shoot him. The player can actually destroy the shield blocking the tunnel with a grenade instead of going on the other side of it. If the player approaches this cliffside overlooking the storm over the crater beyond the cliff and there are marines accompanying the player, unique dialogue plays. Look at the size of that thing! What the hell old it is? I don't know, but I do know that ain't a normal storm. If there are no marines, this dialogue will play instead. Commander, I can see most of it now. Readings are all over the EM spectrum. Roger that, Recon. Shutter your gear, pull back. I'll monitor from Kilo 2-3. Like the previous level, Crow's Nest can be seen in the distance. Multiple missing persons flyers of Bungie co-founder Jason Jones can be found throughout this level. The first one can be found at the first door in the beginning of the level, with the second flyer near the end of the level as you pass the last outdoor area leading to the A8 gun. November 9th, the date that Jason Jones is missing, is also the launch date for Halo 2 in the year 2552. The Ghost's dashboard has a large holographic video screen that displays what's in front of the Ghost in real time. The Mongoose, just like the Warthog, has a digital speed dial. This massive boat that rests near the cliff's edge looks like Master Chief's helmet. You can also find in the back part of the boat a small poster. It features a blurry picture of a pirate, which is a reference to Bungie's April Fool's joke about the made-up game Pimps at Sea. If you hang around inside the second medical room, you can hear an interesting conversation on the Marine's radio referencing the incoming flood cruiser. Admiral, a single Covenant ship just slipped in system. Just one. What's its range and disposition? Above the artifact inside the orbital line. Seems to be holding steady. The attack proceeds as planned, Commander. We're not going to get another shot. Is he a medic or sir, yes, sir. By walking up and bumping into a frightened but not wounded worker, they will go through an animation where they shake off their fright, slowly stand up, grab their pistol, and will then follow the player into the remainder of the level. When shooting the exposed backs of hunters, small worms will spray out of the main colony, wiggling and squirming. You can actually shoot and destroy the AA gun's core from a considerable distance. If any construction workers or marines survive up until you have destroyed the AA gun, they will aid the player and actually fire on the AA gun's core. If you look to the right, two marines can be seen on the cliff's edge, fighting off several flood combat forms. Eventually they will get overrun and even mutate into more combat forms. If you enable the blind skull and then activate an energy sword, you can still see the silhouette of the blade's electrical sparks. This phantom will drop off Spec Ops elite reinforcements and many will go inside the crash flood ship. The opening to the inside of the flood ship is the same hole as the opening of the level Cortana. The elite bodies in these tunnels have randomly spawning armor types that usually combine armors like the combat and assault harnesses. Occasionally, they will also have the face of the shipmaster with his missing mandibles. You can also knock these ultra elites down this hole, allow them to get infected by infection forms, and voila, you have ultra combat forms which is the only time in the game where you can see them. At the top right of the screen, you can see what looks like the Forward Unto Dawn deploying out from underneath the belly of the Shadow of Intent. Sergeant Johnson's character model is actually in the Pelican's cockpit. A Chinese character can be seen on the right side of the ODST's armor, which according to Halopedia means confusion or chaos. There's an exploit where you can get a jackal to run out of ammo for their plasma pistol. All you have to do is allow them to overcharge their plasma pistol and just simply wait. When you see the overcharged light disappear, it means the jackal ran out of battery for their weapon. You now have a harmless jackal. The hunter's flesh actually has an animation, with it moving around in a wave-like motion all along their backs and necks. When the player reaches this crashed pelican, a unique warthog can be found. The warthog's model features a destroyed body, but its turret is undamaged and fully usable. 
This is the only time the player can use a destroyed Warthog's gun in the entire game. If the player stays by the Crash Pelican, they will also hear the transmissions from the human and elite side of the ongoing space battle that's taking place above the Ark. You can hear some of Shipmaster's and Miranda's dialogue, as well as dialogue from Longsword pilots. Let the elites handle the cruisers. Full shields, ramming speed. Hit them again, and again, and again. Now, close and finish. Negative, get out of there. Let your cannons roar. Broadside, what fools can face our guns? Got a lock, Fox Fox. Negative, protect the Pelicans. Stay away from those cruisers! Understood. Engage those seraphs. Watch your fire! Watch your fire! Point laser fire! Break off! I'm hit! I'm hit! Lost avionics. Gonna try to hit their carrier. Goodbye, guys. Suppress with main point laser batteries. Look at it, blister and burn. Affirmative. That's a hit. In this area with the crashed longsword, you can see a couple of deployed SOEIV drop pods that landed in this ditch, with their ODST occupants dead beside them. This down phantom will transmit the brute side of the space battle. If you keep the ODSTs at the beginning of the level alive, all the way to the part where you receive the tanks, they will leave you to get into Johnson's Pelican. These marines have a unique slow walk animation. There's a scorpion symbol on the front of the scorpion tank. You can still destroy these sentinel launchers like the one seen before activating the light bridge, just like in Halo 2. The grunt that acts as a gunner on this phantom spawns with a spiker, instead of a plasma pistol. The Shadow of Intent enters above the waterfall much like the Dawn did, as a tiny speck which quickly grows into a massive ship. The Arbiter has a tactical post-up or breach animation, just like the Marines do at the entrance to the next room, and will remain there until you've entered. 343 Guilty Spark will move ahead on his own and fly into this terminal room and engage in conversation with Installation 00's monitor, 000 Tragic Solitude. Sincere apology, but our, the archive is intact. Is that our maker's plan? Of what? Of our plan. These brutes perform an eating animation. They will sit cross-legged and make eating motions with their hands. While the Mauler only has 5 shots per drum before having to reload, the in-game model seems to indicate that the drum has a capacity of 9 shots. You can 1v1 this Brute Chieftain. He will not attack you until you've entered the circle, and the rest of the Brutes won't even draw their weapons unless you attack one of them. If any Marines survive up until this point, they will also not attack the Chieftain, and instead will hang back and watch the battle. As a reference to its development program, the Spartan Laser has the Norse symbol for gun gear etched into it, which was the mythical spear wielded by the god Odin in Norse mythology. The word Galilean is also printed on the side of the weapon, a possible reference to the astronomer Galileo or his methods. These warthogs are different than the troop transport versions seen in the cutscene. You can actually pilot the AA Wraith by performing a glitch. All you have to do is destroy the hatch, melee the brute, and then with a precision weapon, kill the brute while holding your action button. Make sure the prompt that says hijack wraith is not showing or it won't work. After you take control of it, it's extremely useful when assaulting the first tower, able to decimate both vehicle and infantry with ease. The Shadow of Intent actually does begin a diversionary bombardment. It will fire bursts of plasma at the shield in order to, like Miranda said, distract Truth and his troops from the land assault. This grunt piloting a ghost will not attack you. You can shoot and melee him and he'll still not attack or be hostile towards you. The marathon symbol appears on the elevator control panels throughout this level. 
If the player gets stuck on this island without a hornet, a marine piloted hornet will spawn and land on the island for the player. If you keep destroying the hornets, this will cause more and more marines to enter on hornets. Eventually though, the sheer number of marines may overload the map. All marine and elites have the correct reload animations for every weapon in the game. When these two hornets come to land, one will remain hovering. You can then ride as a passenger letting the marine pilot you to the scarabs. He will proceed to actually drop you off on one of the scarabs, and after destroying the core, the pilot will come back to pick you up and ferry you to the next scarab. Any enemies that are left after the second scarab is destroyed, 343 Guilty Spark will assist the player in defeating them. If you stand at this precise location on the left side of the citadel and wait a few seconds, a song will begin to play. This is The Siege of Madrill, a track from one of Bungie's previous games, Myth. And on the exact opposite side of the citadel, if you stand at this spot and wait a few minutes, you will hear a familiar voice. OMG, this game needs more guitar wank. Am I right? This is Microsoft Sam, most famously known for Arby and the Chief. You can hear up to four different phrases. Happy Easter, Marty. OMG, this game needs more guitar wank. Am I right? I am a monument to all Marty's sins. LOLOLOLO. JMC Paul, Mark so totally fired. Upon entering the Citadel, the Cortana moment the player experiences before the cutscene is also projected on the hollow screens in mirror image. This brute on the display screen holding Johnson is a minor, when in the next scene it's a brute chieftain. The Prophet of Truth is already out of his gravity throne on this screen. Only 6 out of the 7 holographic halo rings light up one by one, with installation 04 remaining dark because of its destruction. Truth's corpse still has his crown on even though it fell off when he was killed. If you teabag Truth's body, he will fall through this platform. The background seen in this opening cutscene is actually Halo 3 concept art. This room with the pillars and circular platform outside the window is actually the former High Charity Council Chamber. There's a transmission coming from the radio of this down pelican. The mausoleum of the Arbiter can be seen from here. The base geometry of this room is the same as the bridge seen previously aboard the Shadow of Intent. There's a secret terminal named the Cortana Terminal located underneath the floor of this room. It was the coin's fault! I wanted to make you strong, keep you safe. I'm sorry, I can't. Brute skulls can be found among the skeletal remains right before you enter the reactor room. This room where you find Cortana is the sanctum of the Hierarch's chamber with the large holographic screen seen in Halo 2. You can see the Banshee that the Arbiter used to get into High Charity near the crashed Pelican. While the player can reach it and destroy it, the player cannot enter it. This is also another piece of concept art in this opening cutscene. 
In the seventh and final Forerunner Terminal, a hidden message is made by Mendicant Bias directly to Master Chief, apologizing for the former's betrayal. This message can only be seen by previously completing the level on Legendary. One might notice behind the terminal is a chamber that houses one of two phase pulse generators like the one seen in Combat Evolved. These, however, are barricaded with four pillars to prevent anyone from disrupting it like the Chief did in Two Betrayals. The second pulse generator can be found in this room leading to the Warthog. Directly opposite the final terminal, at the complete other end of the corridor, lies a secret in the darkness, a Jason Jones cutout. You can actually get the Arbiter to pick up and carry any skull by simply killing him and then leaving the skull right beside him. He then will use it as a melee weapon, bashing enemies to death with it. If you head over to this large crevice next to the control room in the beginning of the level, you can look down and see an endless series of catwalks. In addition, after destroying 343 Guilty Spark and activating the Halo Ring, if you go back and recheck the crevice, it will be distorted by energy waves caused by the ring's activation in the control room. If you deployed auto turrets during the defense of the entrance earlier, they will now attack you, and they're pretty deadly. There's a secret mongoose hidden here, which you can use for the final run to the forward unto dawn. Using it is pretty goofy and a nice change when doing multiple replays of the level. The third easter egg talking grunt, known as the jerk store grunt, can be found here, right before you reach the dawn. The memorial that everyone is gathered at here is actually a pelican's forward wing. This photo is a black and white render of the marines from Halo CE, most commonly seen in the Combat Evolved booklet that came with the game. There is yet another 7th reference with 7 marines drawing their battle rifles and performing the 3 volley salute. And number 117. A Master Chief, Petty Officer of the Navy, rank insignia, is next to the 117 carving. 